What's up guys, it's Blaze here and I'm back for another video. This time we're going to work with death in our game. But before we start, I'm going to say two things. First, I'm going to change the format just a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out all the bits where I'm writing code just so we can trim down the video length as much as possible. The second thing is just for this video exclusively, I'm going to have two separate parts. The first part, which is going to be this bit, is going to deal with the necessary components to get death happening in our game. The second part will be optional. So for those of you who want to work with sequences a little bit more, that's going to be a little bit extra for you guys. If you're not interested in that, then this first section will be for you. Um, but don't worry, I will put the timestamps so that you guys can jump ahead to wherever you want to. All right, let's get a look at what our game looks like right now. And we can see that everything works. It looks okay. I'm going to get rid of this text at the end of this video, but we will skip ahead to where we start, where we should start implementing death. So I'm going to use the power of video editing to skip ahead to that. Okay, so we can see here now that we have this character here has zero health, but he's still alive. So naturally, we are going to need to implement death, something like this. Now, I already have a death animation in my game. So if you guys don't have that yet, I suggest you go ahead, pause the video now and add it into your project now. Okay, great. I'm going to assume that it's in your game and we're good to go. Have a look at this animation here. We can see here that we have, well, a couple of frames. Uh, we have 15 frames, 16 frames for death. Um, however many frames you have, it doesn't matter because what we're going to do is right at the end here, we are going to send out a broadcast, but not from the sprite. We aren't doing it from the sprite here. We are going to do it from the sequence. Right, so I'm pretty sure you guys know how sequences or how to add uh, animations to your sequence by now. So all we're going to do is add that there. And we're going to drag this all the way to the end over here. We're not done yet though, because what we're going to do is right at the end or just before the end of our death animation here, before it disappears, we are going to add the broadcast and this new broadcast, we're going to call it unit def. All right, it's going to look just like that. Click OK. And there it is. It's added in. We're pretty much done with the player for now. Let's go over to the manager and let's add a new case that will listen to this message here. OK, so now we've added in our unit def and it's going to do basically the same thing for now. It's going to do the same thing as unit miss and unit hurt. That's all we need for that. We're pretty much done with the manager as well. So let's go back here and in our player unit, we're going to add in a new macro. New state means new macro. Okay, there we go. We've added it in and you can see here that we get a warning saying that it's unused, but that's okay. We're about to get into that. From the parent unit, go into the step event. And if we scroll down to the hurt section here, what we're going to do is we're going to take these three lines and we're going to enclose it into an if statement. And that checks if we have more than zero health first. All right, so there we go. We've got our if statement here, which again, it checks if our health is greater than zero. And if it is, it's going to do all of the stuff that we had it doing before. It's going to take its um, animation back to the idle. It's going to cancel out the incoming damage and will change the state of the object to idle as well. So if we have, a, if we have an if statement here, what we're going to need is an else statement as well. Okay, let's scroll down a bit so that we can see this a little more. Basically, what this else statement is, is it says if the current health is equal to or less than zero, we're going to need to run the death things here. So I'm going to type it out. And again, like I said, I'm trying out a new format. I'm going to skip 
all the code writing, but I will still explain it line by line. Okay, so I've filled that in. Let's take a look at this. First, it's going to take the layer sequence head position and it's going to change it to the death star. Now we don't have this variable in place yet. That's why we get an error. So don't worry about that for now. The next thing is we're going to go into the global.units list, which if you guys remember, it's the list of every single unit, regardless of if it's an enemy or a player character, and it holds all of that information in a global variable. It's going to find this particular instance's index or position in that list and it's going to remove it or delete it. That's what this function is doing, ds list delete. And then we're going to change our state over to the death state. Now we don't actually have that in yet. So logically, the next thing that we're going to do is add a new case and we're going to call it naturally the death state. Okay, so what's the one thing that we obviously want the object to do when it's in the death state? Well, first we need to check to see if our head position is at the end of the animation. And then naturally, we are going to need it to, well, destroy its own instance. So let's add that in now. Okay, so now that that's done, let's take a look at what we have. We are going to again, check to see where the playhead is. And if it's greater than death end, then we're going to destroy the instance. Normally, this would be fine if we just left it as is, but because we're working with sequences, we actually need to put in something for the cleanup event. Now, I've actually already added mine in and deleted everything here, but go ahead and add your cleanup event into your object now. And we're only going to do one thing here, and that is we are going to make sure that we delete that sequence from off of, well, the asset layer. Okay, there we go. We can see here that we are going to access this, this particular object's unit sequence and we are going to remove it from the asset layer. If we don't run this line of code, it's going to cause a memory leak. And as far as I know, it's going to cause a memory leak and we don't want that happening. So make sure that in your cleanup event, this line is included. Okay, so just, just be aware of that. If you're wondering uh, what the cleanup event is exactly, basically whatever is in this event will run before the object is properly, I say properly destroyed from the game completely. So that's just a quick overview of what that is. That isn't the focus of our video though. So I'll just leave it at that. All right. We're almost done with this main section. The last bit is actually to go into the O player object itself. And down here, what we're going to do is we're going to add the death start and death end variables as well. Okay, so well, there we have it. We have our two lines here. You might be wondering, where did I get 150 and 199 from? Uh, actually, I need to check that. That doesn't look right. 199 does not look right. No, it's 179. So there we go. Let's just quickly adjust that. Should be 179. There we go. That should work out just fine. Let's save this out and let's see what happens when we try to play the game. Everything looks like it works so far and units are taking damage. Let's skip ahead to when a unit actually goes ahead and well, reaches zero health. Okay, so there we go. We saw it there. The character died, he played the animation, all that information disappeared. But you can also see up here in our unit list that, well, we're one unit short now. And that's exactly what we were looking for. So as far as the programming side is concerned, everything works. Let's do one thing about getting rid of all of that text by going into the parent unit, going into the draw event and getting rid of all this draw text because I don't think we really need it at this point. So let's just comment it out for now. Let's leave it at that. All right. So if you guys just wanted to do the programming bit, then we are at the end of this video. You guys can go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button if you guys haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. For those of you who want to stick around and play a little bit with the sequence, then this section is for you guys. 
So I'm going to assume that you are at least a little bit interested in making the death animation just a little more theatrical. Um, I'm not going to get too much into it, but there's more that you can do rather than just playing an animation here. We have two approaches to be able to add a little bit of flair. So my goal here is to take this animation and rather than them just disappearing like what we had before, what I'm going to do is have a slow fade and make them disappear slowly. And there are two ways that you can do this. The first way is of course to go into your sprite editor, add in those extra frames where you gradually take um, the alpha and you gradually reduce it to zero. But I want to do this in the sequence editor for two reasons. The first one being that I want to show you that you can do a lot more with sequences rather than just playing animations or having objects move around on a timeline. You can do things, you can do more things uh, very specifically as well. So let's work with that instead. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and Let's take it to 190, right? We're going to extend it just uh, 10 extra frames and let's see what that looks like. Now, obviously, if we look closely, you can see that it actually loops around and we don't want that happening. What we want to do is we actually want to run the animation once and after he finishes his death animation, which is this frame here, we're going to hold that frame through to the end. For us to be able to do that, however, we need to go over here, right click on the player death, and actually, no, not right click. We're just gonna click this plus icon here, and we are going to select, uh, let's start with the color multiply, actually. Let's start with that one. And basically, what we're going to do is right here at the start, we're going to have it set to full alpha. Right, we click OK, it adds in a key because we have this button on. It automatically records changes, as it says there, whenever you do make a change. And we just want that to stay at uh, 100 opacity so it's not disappearing or anything. But over here, we want it to be completely zero, right? Right at the end, we want it to be at zero. So let's add in another frame and this time let's grab our alpha and take that down to zero. Okay, that looks good so far. Um, actually, you know what? Let's pull this back one frame. There we go. Just a little bit of paranoia on my part. <laughs> anyway, we can see here that we have a bit of a problem. What's happening is we want the disappearing animation to kind of happen after he's finished playing the death seen there. So what we need is something of an in-between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here back to where the uh, right here, that looks good, where the broadcast is and I'm going to add a new frame here by taking the alpha and putting it back to maximum by adding that there. Now that has given me some weird results. Ah, okay, I get it. So I, I don't know why it does this, but for, for whatever reason, it has the latest frame that you have selected and it changes that. I'm not sure why it does that. I think I'm just not using it to its fullest. So I'm going to leave it to that. Let me get back on track. And what we're going to do again is we will add in, let's add in a new frame there and we will take this and set it to zero. Okay, so hopefully this fixed everything. No, I guess not. Okay. Okay, so there we go, that's better. Let's click this one. Now we're multi now we're actually modifying it. Okay, there we go. That looks much better. All right. So, we fixed that. If you haven't already been able to tell, this is a bit of a uh, ad lib section, so I apologize for that, but uh, hopefully we can figure this out together. All right, so we have our animation playing and doesn't start disappearing until after, which is good. However, we still have this problem of him, well, he plays the animation again. We don't want that happening for our hero. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a new parameter track, and this time we're going to choose image index. All right, this creates a, not a new problem, but it's something that we definitely want to fix, right? Because now he's holding his position, not playing the animation at all. We don't want that. So let's add in a new frame, and this will be our base frame. And for every two frames, we're going to increase our image index. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward, and I will see you after I've added in all the frames. Okay, so I've just finished making those adjustments, and just to clarify things, I had to move the broadcast just one frame ahead. So basically what's happening in between these frames is there's a two frame gap. You can change it to however you want to suit your taste, but for me, I think this is a good slow progression. I think that's fine for me. Um, but like I said, you can make it uh, any sort of style you want that's completely up to you. But we can see now that the animation is playing and when he finishes here, he holds that frame and slowly disappears. Although, truth be told, I think it's rather fast. 12 frames, 10 frames is not a lot to work with, but uh, let's, let's stick with this. Let's use what we have. All right, so let's save this out and let's see what it looks like in game. All right, we can see now that all of that text, that horrible text is gone. But uh, let's see what happens when we see a character die. Alright, so there we go, we saw it, it was a little bit fast, but let's let's tweak it a little more, right? So we, what we can do is we can actually grab this, we can drag it out a few more spaces, and of course we can, not that one, we can drag this diamond all the way to the end there. Uh, we don't want to go too far, we want to go to say 195, I think that's good. However, there's another thing that we need to do. We need to take this, we need to add in that new information, right? So let's go to our O player. And instead of 179, what we're going to do is we're going to change to 195, just like that. All right, so let's try playing our game now and see if these changes are reflected. Okay, so there we go. We saw the death of one of the units over here. It was a lot slower and a lot more paced. I think that's good for me. I think that works really well. So let's close this off here. This basically marks the actual end of this video. So I hope you guys liked the this format that I'm working with. I'm trying to cut down as much, um, I guess, useless or as much quiet time from out of this out of these videos going forward. So hopefully you guys like it. If you have anything that you want to give feedback on, then please feel free to do so in the comment section below. Uh, the next section we will be working with UIs in general. So we'll be adding buttons and those buttons won't have any functionality yet, but we will slowly start moving everything from just clicking in random spaces to actually clicking on buttons to be able to do certain things. So hopefully that will be something that you guys are looking forward to. In any case, this closes off this section entirely. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys haven't already, uh, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you guys have any ideas for stuff you want me to cover, then feel free to do so. Leave them in the comment section below. Uh, as for an update for the people who are curious about the me starting a Discord group, I'm still looking for people to be mods and admins around the world. So if you guys are interested in doing that, I'm sorry, I can't pay you guys anything. I don't really get anything from YouTube to begin with. But uh, if you guys have the spare time, you guys want to be a part of a community, then I would be very grateful if you guys were to volunteer. If you are interested in, in that, then of course, just let me know. You can send me a message through the email section. Um, but for now, this is it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.